Is Peloton a good investment? Let's find out by running it through the Anti-Fragile Framework. My name is Brian Feraldi. And I'm Brian Stoffel. Thanks for joining us on another episode. Today, we're going to run Peloton, the exercise bike uh, brand aficionado company uh, through the Anti-Fragile Framework. Brian, do you know anybody that has a Peloton? I know one person. I have one friend who has a Peloton. I have a friend that has a Peloton too, and she absolutely loves it. So I know that this is a brand that really, really resonates with people and people that have them send, tend to really, really use them. All right, but let's start with the uh, anti-fragile framework. As a reminder, there are three sections and there's eight total checks. It spits out a final score to figure out if it's a fragile, robust, or anti-fragile investment. So let's start with mission. Brian, Peloton's mission is to use technology and design to connect the world through fitness, empowering people to be the best versions of themselves anywhere, anytime. So I love this, but here's the problem. I've done a little bit more research on this company and I know that they have, they've shifted their mission over time before it focused on the connection, which we'll get to in a second, because that's kind of important connection via fitness to being the best version of yourself. That it might sound like I'm nitpicking. I like the mission statement, but I feel like they went from focusing on con social connection which I think is where they should focus to being the best physical version of yourself, which is fine. But I think if you're, if you're going to steer the company towards the future, it'd be good to pick one of those two. So I'm a little bit confused, I guess you could say. I wish there was just less words. I wish yes. it was just Peloton empowers people to be the best versions of themselves. Yes. And personally, I, I, I wish it was Peloton wants to connect the world through fitness. Oh, that would also be awesome. Yeah. Two potentially great mission statements, Peloton. All right, let's talk about the moat. All right, so they've actually got a bunch of them. They have a network effect, which is weak. And that's the part where connection I was talking about. You, you're not going to see numbers on this, but I have heard from um, in, in community boards, from friends about how there are communities that form based around themes that have really nothing to do with exercise. Like there's a biking group that is cancer survivors and a group of parents who lost children in X, Y, or Z, or, and they get together once a year. And I know that their annual event that they have is big. So that's a weak network effect because it, Peloton doesn't necessarily get that much better because one person joins, but there are some network effects at play. Okay. I buy that switching costs. Yeah, I think we'll get to the switching costs after this, but I mean, if you put down for the bike, $2,400, there's switching costs involved because those are some serious sunk costs if you decide to stop subscribing to the plan that you need to participate in these classes. That's an important point because Peloton makes money in two ways. It makes money by selling you the really expensive hardware, but it also makes money off of recurring subscription sales after you're already purchased. So there are some switching costs from the recurring subscription sales. Right, exactly. Low cost? No, I mean, they're opening. They said they're going to open a, a place soon, but right now, no. Intangible? Uh, yeah, so their brand is huge. I, I think their brand is super powerful. I've got some evidence for it. That's a big, big part of this. Counter positioning. Now, this one is weaker, and I'll show in the slides at the very end why I say this, but they're counter positioned against gyms, basically. Okay, fair enough. So let's talk brand. 94 net promoter score. Brian, that you know is, net promoter score is more than me. So you tell me what that looks like. Okay. A net promoter score is you ask people, are you likely, how likely are you on a scale of one to 10 to recommend this product company to a friend? If it's a 10 or a nine, it's a plus one. If it's a seven or if it's an eight, it's zero. And if it's six or less, it's minus one. So the net is adding up, asking hundreds or thousands of people, taking all the totals and adding them together. A net promoter score of 94 is off the charts good. I, I I mean, like that blows Apple away. That blows Tesla away. That blows Yeti away. Like that is insanely good. That's that's super impressive. Yep. Here's but, the sw switching costs like I was talking about. It, and Brian, I don't know about you, but this reminds me a whole bunch of um, like intuitive surgical. Like you get the machine in the hospital. They just spent... $2 million, $1 million on this machine. You better use it. But I just also wanted to say, if you get the app, it's $12, $13 a month for people to use it. There are, there are sneaky 
hidden switching costs there in so much as they've got your credit card number and you might not use it for like two months. That doesn't mean you're going to stop using it because it, it happens without you even thinking about it. And, and we should say you can get the app without having the bike. Yeah, that's important. They, they launched that, I think, last year. But even gyms have switching costs. A lot of people, once they join a gym, they keep it on their credit card bill and they don't go and cancel it. So there are some switching costs, but uh, even if they are weak. Okay. And then they just made this slide, which I think is important about who they're disrupting. 36,000 health club and boutique fitness operators. And they say that they're much like Amazon was with books and music, like Nintendo was with video games and so on and so forth. So it's just worth putting out there. Sure. And optionality. So the optionality is huge because if you look at that bottom bar, it tells you about back in 2017, that gray area was how much of people using this were focused on biking and it was 90% plus. But you come into now and you see that there's strength, people are using the app for strength training, for floor exercises, for meditation or yoga, for running, for outdoor sports, the list goes on and on. This is a really impressive thing about what Peloton has done. You and I, without the bike, without the treadmill, can get the app and start using this. And so that that's that's some serious optionality to me. So their optionality within their community, they're expanding their community base from, hey, we just do cycling to, hey, any any exercise you want to do, you can use Peloton for. Right. And they've got a treadmill now, too. Great. All right. Pretty good on the barbell. Let's do the financials. So cash, as of March 31st, 2021, $2.7 billion. Debt was eight uh 800 million and free cash flow was 400 million pretty good yep. that's great uh, those last two numbers i rounded but it gives the picture which is the most important thing i think that's a very strong balance sheet yeah almost two billion dollars in net cash and 400 million in free cash flow so financially very strong concentration None. No customer concentration risk uh good to see all right let's talk glass door pretty good ratings for the ceo yeah, those, those are very good ratings. And it wasn't off of just a couple, too. It's over 200 ratings. So people seem to like working for John Foley. Is he the founder? He is. And not only that, but if you look below, uh, Tom Cortez is the co-founder. And he's the chief operating officer and the head of product development. And then I'm going to, I think it's Hisao Kushi is their chief legal officer and also co-founder. So all three co-founders, assuming there's just three, are still involved and in the C-suite. Correct. That's great to see. All right, let's go to ownership. Really hard to see this result, but we see that insiders and executives own 69% of the voting power and 45 million shares. John Foley, the CEO and founder himself, owns 18 million shares. So times a few hundred dollars stock price equals a lot of money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yes, there is some skin in the game here. All right. Well, before we get to the final score, you might be asking, where did Brian and I learn all this stuff? In fact, where did Brian and I even meet? The answer is the same. The Motley Fool. Uh, both Brian and I were uh, were members, were paying members of Motley Fool Stock Advisor. And that's where both of us honed our investment chops and really learned everything that we know about investing. If you're interested in uh, giving Stock Advisor a try at a 50% discount, uh, click the link in the description. Uh, visit fool.com slash Feraldi. That's fool.com slash F-E-R-O-L-D-I for uh, to get Market Fool Stock Advisor for 50% off. All right, Brian, let's get into the final score. All right. So we start off with the mission statement, and I, I gave them not full credit here. And the reason for that is just that that shifting. Now, if you've got this at home, if you've downloaded our spreadsheet, you can go ahead and give them full points if you think they deserve it. I gave them one point. One point. Fair enough. Moat? Uh, so a couple different things. One point for the brand, a point and a half for switching costs because we talked about that investment that's involved. But then I also gave them a half point for the network effect for the communities that form and also a half point for the counter positioning. Cause look, sometimes it's easier to just do your bike at home, still feel like you socialized and not have to drive to the gym. You add all those together. And I believe we should have three and a half points. Three and a half points. Pretty good. Optionality. So in optionality, I see that they have the ability to expand maybe though not outside of their industry. So that's why I didn't give them the full three points. Okay, two and a half. That's pretty good. Financials? Very strong balance sheet. I gave them a full point. Concentration? No problems there. Glassdoor? They got great reviews. Founder? 
All three still involved. And ownership. And they own a bunch of the shares. Add all that up, and we get a final score of 11, which is just shy of the anti-fragile rain really in the robust category. So, Brian, is this a stock that interests you? It is. It is a stock that I'm going to be following very closely because um, I it, it's very strong. And if you look at that mission statement, if I gave them full credit, they'd, they'd be in that 12-point range right there. There you go. So this is not in your I have to buy it immediately category, but it is in your I'm very interested in this company category. Correct. And I do not own shares at this point. Uh, neither do I. I guess that's worth saying at this point. And this is also accurate as of June 21st, 2021. And these numbers could change over time. All right. We hope you enjoyed this. Peloton is an interesting company. If you are interested in getting your hands on the checklist where we do this scoring, uh, click the show notes below. Thanks, everyone, for watching. See you next time, Brian. See you next week.